Hi, this is Rob Waller from Business Loan Services and welcome to my Friday Business Finance Bulletin, a weekly roundup of news tips, ideas and strategies on raising finance and dealing with banks. So what have I got for you this week? Well, we're going to be looking at the different sources of finance that business use. We're also going to be looking at late payment and what the government's trying to do to encourage businesses to pay up on time. And in my business tip of the week, I look at why business owners hate writing business plans. <laughs> Is that you? So let's start by looking at the different sources of finance that business owners use. Interesting survey out this week from Hilton Baird Financial Solutions. And they looked at this topic of what sources of finance are business owners currently using. Well, 56% of them said they're actually using day-to-day -day cash flow. In other words, using cash within the business to fund the day-to-day -day finance requirements. Now that's great because it means you're not uh, dependent on a bank, um, it's a cheap source of finance obviously, but as I mentioned in previous videos and podcasts, as we grow, um, your appetite for cash is going to get more. And so if you are relying on cash flow, you've got to make sure that you plan correctly. Do regular cash flow forecasts to make sure you don't run out of cash. The next source of finance that business owners are using, well, 47% of them saying they're using their business credit card. Now, I understand it's quick, it's easy, and it's great for short-term needs, especially if you want to take full advantage of the interest-free period. But the problem lies, of course, is when you are permanently using that limit, you never pay the debt down, and it effectively becomes a medium-term to long-term debt. Not good. 30% of business owners saying they're using overdraft facilities. No surprise there. And 29% of businesses saying they're using asset finance facilities. That's all good stuff. What else are they using? Invoice discounting, personal credit cards. Mm, not so sure about that. Loans from families and friends. Mm, also not too sure about that either. But the key message is there's a diverse range of funding that you can tap into and make sure you use a little bit of everything. Don't just have all of your eggs in one basket. Use all of the different sources in the right proportion. Now, late payment. We know that this is one of the key reasons why many business owners need to borrow um, because businesses are not prompt in paying. Well, the government realized this, um, has realized it for many years. And in fact, a few years ago, the government devised something called the Prompt Payment Code. And it asked business owners to voluntarily sign up to the code. And essentially, the code says that you know, people will uh, make sure that they pay invoices on time. They'll be transparent about what the terms and conditions are. And currently, about 1,700 businesses are signed up to the prompt payment code. But guess what? You know, not all of them are actually adhering to those best practices. So all of the good ones who are actually doing what they say have got together to form an advisory board. And on that board are companies such as Aviva, Barclays Bank, Greg's the Bakers, a couple of local councils, um, the kind of best of breed. So what they're doing, they're looking and revising the prompt payment code. And um, by spring uh, 2015, we'll come out with a revised code full of best practices and case studies and try to encourage the firms that have signed up to actually adhere to the code. Now, if you're about to sign a contract and you want to make sure that you get paid on time, you may want to see if they have actually signed up to the prompt payment code. So if you go along to their website, which is promptpayment.org.uk, you'll see a tab along the top that says signatories. And it's alphabetical order. You can search if your customer is signed up to that code. And then when you sign the contract, you can quite with a little wry smile remind them that they are signatories to the prompt payment code and that you expect payment on time. Um, Lovett, a commercial um, debt litigation firm, um, revealed this week that in quarter three of 2014, there's been an increase in the amount of money owed to businesses by about 17% when compared to quarter two 2014. And it kind of shows that perhaps businesses are just getting a little bit lax in data collection. You've really got to be on the ball, making sure you're issuing letters out there, threatening legal action, and following up if necessary follow through on those promises. Remember, it's your money, not theirs. Time to start getting tough. Now, what about alternative funding? Um, earlier this week, um, I was in Whitney in Oxfordshire and I was doing a session for a business networking group um, called Open Doors. It's Open Doors with a Z. Um, great groups if you're based in Whitney in Oxford and they've got two groups, go along and check them out. And I was doing a session for the members there on all the alternative forms of finance. Um, and interestingly, I read this week that the British Chambers of Commerce um, are also wanting to go out and educate their members on um, what the alternative sources of finance are. So they've tied up with peer-to-peer -peer lender Archover, and um, that's A-R-C-H-Over.com, um, uh, secured 
uh, peer-to-peer -peer lender and they're going out there to do a series of workshops trying to educate business owners on crowdfunding and crowd lending. So if you want to see if one of those workshops are coming near you, go onto the British Chambers of Commerce website which is britishchambers.org.uk and you'll find some of the workshops listed there. I've mentioned in, pre, in a previous bulletin about PricewaterhouseCoopers and how they've recently tied up with Funding Circle, whereby they're going to refer Funding Circle into many of their clients. Well, PwC are at it again. Um, this week the news came out that they've done a tie-up with Market Invoice. Now, Market Invoice, an online invoice discounter. So if you've got invoices um, outstanding for 60, 90 days and it's a good, well-known name, you'll pop along to Market Invoice and discount it, get your cash today. So PwC are now going to be referring their clients who are looking for immediate cash uh, via invoice discounting onto Market Invoice. And as I mentioned in the last I think it was two previous bulletins, another example of old world meeting new world. So we're going to see a lot more of this, so another interesting development there from PwC. Now, what about traditional finance and bank funding? Well, this is my business tip for this week. As you know, when you go to a bank for finance, the bank wants a business plan. But you know what, many business owners can't respond quick enough when the deal of a lifetime comes when the bank says, where's your business plan? So you have to go off, scurrying, you spend two or three weeks putting a plan together, and then the opportunity is gone. Well, you should really be making sure that you have a draft business plan on your shelf, ready to go at any one time. But because your finance need is not there today, you put it off, and you put it off. And there are many reasons why you may put off writing a plan. So in this clip from a live seminar I did, I share a couple of reasons why business owners hate writing business plans. Let's go to that clip now. So there are good reasons why we should be writing a business plan. And yet, the majority of us don't. Why is that? Well, first of all, I would say that the, the name business plan doesn't exactly fill you with energy, does it? Huh? As soon as you mention business, oof, ugh, go to that process. So the people I work with, which is the first thing we do, is say, well, this is not a business plan. What do you want to call it? It's my business, exposure, business explosion plan. It's my business growth plan. Yeah? It's my holiday in the Caribbean plan, whatever it may be. Call it something different other than a business plan. For those of you in LNP, that would be reframing it, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Just reframe it to be something else. Something that actually seems to give you a reason as to why you should be doing it. Think of it differently. Why else don't we write plans? Well, people say, ah, I just don't have the time. You do. Dan touched upon this in his session yesterday about time management. You know, we need a big enough why. We do have enough time. We just choose to fill our time with other things because those other things are more important to us or less painful than sitting down and writing the business plan. And then another reason why people don't write the plans is that it's too complicated. Yeah, I am good. Yeah, a thing like this. Size of war and peace, you know. <laughs> the dust comes out. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be. A good business plan, even if you're not borrowing and you still should have one, should be running to no more than two or three pages. Only two or three pages. That's it. If you're not borrowing money, that's your little roadmap. If you're looking to borrow from the bank, probably 15 to 20 pages maximum. It does not have to be the size of war and peace. So, do any of those reasons ring a bell? You know, the key message there is always have a draft business plan ready to go should the deal of a lifetime land on your desk. So, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the bulletin and say please feel free to share it amongst your friends and colleagues. So, that's it for this week. Have a great and successful, profitable week, and I look forward to being with you again next Friday. Bye bye now.